Well hey guys, you join me working today on the Rover and there's been a couple of things that have been bugging me about this car since I brought it such as there's only one wing mirror on the car on the driver's side now I've been on the popular website eBay and I've managed to find a passenger side wing mirror so we'll get that fitted today and also these number plates front and back they've never quite fitted right the front number plate for example isn't fitted on its correct mounting plinth so I've managed to source one of these off a friend Brian and I've managed to get a new set of number plates made up which are raised riveted as opposed to these cheaper pressing ones from Framptons. So I think we'll start off by getting the wing mirror fitted to the car. Now this should be nice and easy as there's a hole that's already been drilled here and a blanking plug been put in its place. So there's also been a wing mirror on this hand side of the car at some point in this car's life. So if we just remove the little blanking plug, there we are, and that's been sprayed the same colour as the car, and then just take the securing nut off the back of the wing mirror and all the little washers and grommets off and then just put that in place that's quite a snug fit and there's two nylon washers one ordinary washer a locking washer and the actual nut I'm having to hold on with one hand while securing everything else with the other so it's a bit of a faff. There we are. Just lining everything up. It's probably the sort of job you really want to do with a friend holding the, the wing mirror while you look underneath and get all the nuts and washers in place. But there we are, that's in place. And then just make sure it's about sort of upright nicely. That'll do. Just it in place. Now the only thing left for me to do with this is just to adjust it where I want it and then just lock it off. So let's move on to the front number plate. Okay so the first thing I want to do is make sure I get the drill holes in the correct place on this number plate. Pet peeve of mine with number plates is when you see people they just slap them onto the car. They spend hundreds of thousands of pounds restoring a car just to drill on the number plate in any old place and the holes aren't even. Well to me that's not good enough. If you're spending good money restoring a car you should spend just as much time on the positioning of the number plate holes. So to do this I'm going to use a little bit of masking tape, a pen, a vernier gauge and we're just going to measure out this side here how big it is and then we'll divide it by half and put a line there and then we'll divide this distance here by that distance there and that will give us a nice sort of hole to go there and I'll use that same measurement to go over on this side with a bit of masking tape. I have a little block of wood underneath just centre punch where it needs to be there and there and then we'll just drill it through where it needs to be so I'll probably just whack this into time lapse so you don't have to see it all go at normal speed. So here we go. Thank you. 
Right then, there we are. Two drill holes drilled in place, they look nice and even. So the next step is gonna be to put it onto the backing plate. Now this, I'm just gonna eyeball it as to where it needs to go because I don't 100% know if the front bumper is slightly wonky or if this bracket is slightly wonky. These two mounting brackets don't exactly look straight as they should be, so I'm just gonna eyeball it nice and straight so it looks reasonably square within the actual mounting bracket and then we'll just get this to about where it needs to be which that looks about right there it seems to be pretty even there and I think that will do there and then we'll just get the drill holes drilled out for the backing plate and then we can mount the number plate Okay, there we are. So, something else to note is that this being a raised riveted number plate, if I just bolt this straight down onto the backing plate there, it's gonna bend. So what I'm gonna do is put a couple of spacer washers behind the number plate there, so that as it compresses down, it doesn't bend the number plate onto the backing plate and therefore it just keeps everything nice, straight and true. So that's one in place there. And I'm only going to do these finger tight just for now in case I need to take the number plate off when mounting it to the car and we'll tighten it up fully once it's on the car. And there we are. I think that looks rather nice. Let's go fit it to the car. So I've picked up from eBay an original set of fixing bolts for the number plate plinth on the front of the car. And it even comes with the original set of instructions for the Rover 2000 and the original packaging of genuine Leyland parts. How cool is that? So I may just keep that in the glove compartment of the car because it's a nice little novel thing to have. So let's get this number plate off. And this number plate's had a hard life. You can see that already. It's been fitted in three different positions during its life. So it may have at one stage been fitted with the correct number plate plinth. I don't know. But um, let's say there's three different drill holes for it. So it's obviously been on the car on and off in three different places over its lifetime. But I'm glad to see the back of it. I've never liked this number plate on this car. It just doesn't suit it. I think, you know, a 1960s car of like a Rover sort of standard should have a raised riveted number plate, not pressed number plate. Because raised riveted number plates are a little bit more expensive. A Rover is a little bit more of a classy car. So therefore raised riveted looks right, press plates don't. So anyway, that can be now discarded. And these are just, looks like just some homemade brackets just be taken off. Well, they do the job. So, it's better than not having the front number plate on at all, I suppose. So there we are, bye bye to them. And hello to the new number plate.
And what I've been told is this goes underneath like that. Coach bolt goes through there like that. Now how I'm going to hold this is much like doing the wing mirror earlier. It's really a two-person job. As you can see, it's slipping about a bit. So it's going to be a bit of trial and error. I think we can hold it like that. Up and somewhat get it in place without damaging anything. There we are, that's one. And it looks like everything's going to line up quite nicely. Give it a last little pinch down with the spanner. Tighten up of those little screws from earlier. And there we are. That's much better. That's where the number plate should be. Not on top there, slightly behind there. That's fantastic. Let's get the one on the back. Now the rear number plate is going to be a lot easier to fit than the front number plate because it's already got this mounting plinth in place so I don't have to muck about doing that. So it's just a case of undoing these two self tappers, one just there and the other one just there and that gets rid of the horrible old number plate which we can discard to one side. And then much the same as the front number plate, I'm just gonna have to measure and mark and drill where I want the holes and then drill them on the plinth and then we can put that up in place. Right, so much like the front number plate, we're just gonna eyeball where this number plate needs to be. I'd say about there would be good. So we just twist around and get the center punch in place. 
Here's our mark. And carefully pull that out. And that gives our first mark. And then, just a case of holding it nice and taut like that again center punch that seems to be a little bit high just being careful not to move it again this is sometimes you are better off with a, another set of hands helping you out trick is taking your time and making sure you get it right so I'd say about there will do and that's our little hole just there just draw that out Just the same as the front, we're going to use some spaces just behind the number plate because obviously this is a riveted number plate and if we tighten up these screws tight without putting anything behind them they'll bend the number plate we don't want to do that but at least by putting something behind it it won't bend the number plate and it will look much better so that's one for one side to wash behind it into the new drill hole and we can just tighten them both up there we are I think that's absolutely fantastic much better it fits the plinth exactly how it should do like the one that was on it which didn't seem to fit right so i hope you've enjoyed seeing me make a few changes to the rover but as always guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video take care